new high-rise buildings dominate the skyline. Cars, buses, and trucks speed by on modern highways. International businesses compete to advertise their presence. More and more, like the Spanish explorer Balboa half a millennium ago, the world seems to be coming to Panama. El, la economía panameña ha estado creciendo en la última década a tasas de 9, 10%. We went to Panama to see firsthand the incredible transition this country has made since the beginning of the 21st century. And fortunately, I had as my guide Episcopal Bishop Julio Murray, a man who sees below the surface of the rosy scenario. I'm not an enemy to growth, but I think that economic growth needs to be hand in hand with human development as well. We have been paying a lot of attention to the economic growth but we have not been paying enough attention to the human development in this part of the region. Bishop Murray and I took a walk through Punta Pacifica, Pacific Point, with its modern and luxurious hotels and condominium apartments. One of uh, the reasons why we're in this area is because here is where you can see part of the economic growth. Mm -hmm the high risers and the wonderful buildings. There is also another reality to this that I would hope that we could also have a chance to see. Virtually in the shadow of the new construction, you'll find homes where families live very differently, visible to anyone willing to look, and yet largely unseen. I would like to refer to injustice as the heart of inequalities. When I think of inequalities, I also think of exclusions. I think of people who have to live at the margins. The amazing growth of certain parts of the economy of Panama did not happen by accident. It was part of a plan by the governments of Panama to make their nation what they call the Singapore of the Americas. That means Panama offers tax breaks, hiring privileges, and other incentives to convince transnational businesses to set up shop here. As another enormous source of investment, there's the canal. Controlled by Panama for the past 15 years and, as it marks its 100th birthday, about to expand operations. Finally, Panama is strategically placed. The country has been at one of the crossroads of the world since the days of the Spanish conquistadors. La ciudad de Panamá se parece a Miami. Sin embargo, Panamá adolece los mismos problemas de cualquier nación del tercer mundo. Panama's capital is where Bishop Julio Murray was born and raised. He's witnessed the changes since the country's government adopted the Singapore of the Americas model. Now, in doing this, which is not a bad thing, the needs of the people are not being met. As the wealthier neighborhoods fill up with employees of transnational corporations, along with tourists buying condos to serve as vacation homes, Panamanians who belong to the working class and who have lived here for generations feel the squeeze. Estas familias se van a encontrar una vez cuando salgan de, de su vivienda, el arrendamiento puede estar 10 veces por encima del valor que pagaban anteriormente, con lo cual no tienen ninguna posibilidad de permanecer en el área. Across the 50 mile wide isthmus, a statue of Christopher Columbus, Cristobal Colon in Spanish, overlooks a main avenue of the city that bears his name. Colon is a hard scrabble port at the northern terminus of the Panama Canal, a relatively young city created by New York shipping magnate William Henry Aspinwall, who came to Panama in the 1850s to build a railroad. Bishop Murray suggested that I meet several of the people who live in Cologne to get a sense of life there. We, Luisa, we, we are here in the neighborhood trying to have conversation with the people who live in Cologne, and our hope is that you will kind of walk with us a little bit in the, in the neighborhood and tell us about the reality of the neighborhood. For instance, this area was a beautiful area a few years ago, and now you can look around and see what we have here. A few hours ago, if you had come, your car couldn't come through here. The water was so high from the rain. Oh, it rained this morning? It rained this morning, and the whole place was so flooded that you wouldn't want to put your car through here. The frequent flooding results from Cologne's crumbling infrastructure. The once beautiful city is now filled with condemned buildings. How's that building used? Is that a, people live there? Yeah, people live there. How many families do you say would live there? It's about 16. The people crowded into these homes may be considered lucky by many of their neighbors. All these people living on the streets because there's no work and there's nowhere for them to live. 
We met Louisa Ellis's nephew, a taxi driver, who was changing a flat tire in front of his aunt's home. Estuardo Guedion knows that his city is home to the Cologne Free Trade Zone, where hundreds of companies export and reship cargo valued in the billions of dollars. He looks at the growth of investment in the capital city, less than 50 canal miles away. How then can Cologne look this way? Guedion thinks he knows the answer. While it hardly compares to the capital city, Cologne has its share of luxury housing. The front lawn of the Hotel Washington is beautifully manicured. Modern, luxurious houses with multiple late model vehicles are surrounded by barbed wire fences. All that less than a quarter mile from Playitas, where 80 families lived their lives in homes made mostly of scrap metal. Where I see that my brother is suffering, where I see that my brother is excluded, where I see that my brother is really treated unjustly, and I don't say anything, or I don't look for the reasons why this injustice is going on, then it makes me accomplice as well. Amidst the struggle in Cologne, we definitely saw signs of hope, or at least examples of the human spirit. Bishop Murray took me to the home of a family he knows whose son works as a crane operator. But me gustaría que, que Panamá, más Colón, se superara. I would like for people in Colón to really be uh, uplifted. Yeah. And, and look for better men. Yeah. But uh, one thing, una cosa no tenemos que pensar en el gobierno. We don't only have to think on the government, yeah, we also we have, have to think on what we are going to do as uh, ask citizens God, as well. And ask God to change with my and we attitude okay. to be the better. Back in the capital in Panama City, Bishop Murray and I went for a walk on a Saturday afternoon along Avenida Central. So this is how the other half lives, as they say, but it, it looks like a lot more than half. This is definitely more than half. This is where the Panamanians are. What you are looking at is the creativity of the people. In order for them to take food to their homes, these are the new places for jobs. This is the new economy. And this economy, as you can see, it helps the people uh, provide not only the food for their, for their family, but it also keeps them busy. They have a job. And it speaks to the dignity of the people as well. The bishop stopped and spoke with vendors who put up their small wooden booths to sell fruit and drinks. Carlos Quinones ended up in Panama when he fled civil war in his homeland of Colombia. Another man, who says he's worked as a mechanic and engineer in New Jersey and Chicago, is now repairing watches. So somebody came to me and said, hey, fix my watch. You fix car, you fix boat, you fix engineer, you fix all kind of stuff, and you can't fix a watch. And that's the way, where the idea come from. Walking in the midst of this crowded market provided what might be the most powerful impression of my visit. We were surrounded by the people of Panama, who were certainly struggling, but also putting their energy and creativity together to make a life. The church has taken the decision to walk with those who have been on the margins. We find that those who are living on the margins are the ones that have been living with the inequalities caused by this economic system that is unjust. Before we left Panama, we attended the Sunday morning service at Christ Church by the Sea in Cologne, the 150-year-old church which underwent a four-and-a-half-year renovation, transforming it from a gutted shell to a sanctuary of restored beauty. Bishop Julio Murray, who led the service that morning, believes that there could be an even better day ahead for the people of Panama. If we could just make the values of the kingdom of God our everyday values, values of justice, values of respect, values of inclusion, values of love. Those could be steps of what the new day would look like in Panama. <laughs>